we welcome you to Our Jewish Roots. I can't believe that 2023 is coming to an end. We want to continue to bring you Christianity through Jewish eyes. You guys kind of have those Jewish eyes, yes? You're we it. are Jewish, <laughs> and man, what a year. Things have changed from us being behind that camera to now being in front of a camera. Right. A lot of changes, man. It's a well, brighter is, over here. It has seemed <laughs> very natural. You've been with the ministry for years. 17 We've years, introduced yeah. you, but some people are like, okay, once more, let us know who these guys are. Who mm -hmm. are you? Well, I'm Joshua, <laughs> and this is Caleb, and we are Jewish believers in Yeshua, yes. and we have been blessed for the past five years mm -hmm. to host the Bearded Bible. Bible Brothers on our social media platforms where we get to talk about relevant topics today and uh, how the Bible looks at them and explain details and prophecy as well. So this ministry provides so much for so many different groups of people to understand the word and to be able to be equipped as believers to go out and reach the world for Yeshua. Mm. Right now we want to show you some things that we've done in 2023. We want to show you an excerpt from Ezekiel. Let's go there now. The Lord said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In 593 BC, Ezekiel was among the exiles by the river Kibar in Babylonia, and the heavens were opened, and he saw visions of God. A whirlwind came out of the north, and a brightness was about it. His name means God strengthens, and Ezekiel was going to use all the strength he could muster. And why is that? Because this man lived at the ragged edge of time. A once dry, desolate land, now restored, welcomes new life. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For behold, I am for you, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. It's called a shuk, a marketplace, and what a marketplace it is here in Jerusalem. The atmosphere just bristles with life and activity. It's teeming with people coming to get some of the good fruits of the earth fruits that were produced by Eretz Yisrael in the land of Israel. אתם כי נאמר, עין תחת עין ושן תחת שן. ואני אומר לכם, אל תתקוממו לרשע. והמכה אותך על הלחי הימני, תתה לו גם את האחר. ואשר יחפוץ לריב 
For untold generations, it had all seemed so natural. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But now the Lord was saying quite the opposite. Go the second mile. Regardless of the circumstance, give to him who asks you, and then give him more. The Latin expression lex talionis harks to uh, a term for the uh, law of retaliation. You, know, you, can, you can't take that from people. Uh, there's the biblical expression, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Our founder Zola Levitt started this program 45 years ago wow. on television. And then since then, this wonderful thing called the internet, as my dad says, www dot, came on and uh, that opened up a whole new world for us. And that's where you guys started as the Bearded Bible Brothers on yes. www dot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know Caleb wanted to be a part of the ministry 45 years ago, but he wasn't born. So <laughs> yeah. we, we came when we came. It's an amazing evangelistic tool, the internet. I know people didn't originally see it as that, you know, different ministries. But how many eyes and ears can we reach around the world that we normally couldn't with television, with the gospel of Yeshua? And that's why we want to be innovative and reach different audiences, even different age groups that normally wouldn't watch television. That's really been our heart, how we got started. As you have been very yeah. successfully, and we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. That's part of our story as on this program and how you came to us. And mm -hmm. we're just, I mean, you've been part of the ministry, yeah. but your vision, your heartbeat, and we're thankful for that. So thankful. Right now, the God of Miracles series is one of my favorites. We want to show you some highlights from that right now. To believe in the Bible is to believe in miracles. From Genesis to Revelation, the impossible became possible. As God's hand moved across space and time, land and seas were created, graves opened, water turned to wine, the sick and lame healed, the land of Israel completely restored. Past, present, and future is the Alpha and Omega. He is the God of miracles. And speaking of miracles, certainly downtown Jerusalem is just that. Amazingly, during its long history, Jerusalem has been attacked 52 times, captured 44 times, besieged 23 times, and destroyed twice. And yet to witness its downtown streets is to witness a miracle. The capital of Israel has risen miraculously from the ashes and become a thriving municipality with wonderful shops, restaurants, and a light rail system that can take you virtually anywhere you need to go. My wife is always saying, drink, drink. She's always looking out for me. God bless her. I love her. I love pomegranate juice, too. I'm glad I don't have to make it. They squeeze it and make it for me here on Ben Yehuda Street. Fascinating place just up from Zion Square here in Jerusalem. It's fascinating in part because of the person that the street is named after. I say that because Ben Yehuda himself participated in the modern miracle. I say that because Hebrew had been a dead language. Ben Yehuda is the one responsible for the modern language for the modern state. All of my muscles are in a constant state of contraction from the waist mm. down. So I'm fighting my hips, my legs, my knees, my ankle, mm -hmm. and that makes my walking gait really unsteady, extremely awkward, yeah. very inefficient, and my balance is extremely poor. Mm -hmm. So I do walk mm -hmm. uh, with a walker now, which is normal for a 40-year-old living with cerebral palsy. Yeah. But it should be said that all of the things that the doctor said I would never be able to do, you, I do all of those things. All. That's right. None of them perfectly, but I do all of those things. I came 
forth from a man. But I found favor with him. And, and now, true success is not measured in wealth and power, but in the estate of one's I heart. I've never been happier and more fulfilled. Ever for. I raised him up strictly in the faith, and the more. law, and the prophet. And now I want to give something back. I believe yeah. Elohim meant it to be this way. She's still a cornerstone of wisdom to the family. But you and as are I always see, in my heart. The trading has become profitable, and the harvest has yielded good crop. All of this will surely benefit my family. I wouldn't have been able to take on these extra tasks without the love and support of my husband. He has given me everything I've needed and more, and now I want to give something back. It feels so good to be needed, to know my contributions matter. As busy as I am, I've never been happier and more fulfilled. My workers have done well and are worth their hire and more. As I have been blessed with increase, so I would like to bless them as well. She shall be called woman. That's what you just saw some excerpts from. Uh, this isn't obvious. I am a woman. What? And I'm thankful for a series that focused on who we are. And I have partnered with you as a woman for we're in our 34th year. Congratulations, oh, 34. We've, yes. we've partnered together because we decided that what we saw in each other was important to invest in each other's lives. And we hope that you as our viewer see the importance of investing in this ministry. We need to continue on for our children and our children's children and our great grandchildren also and yours. So partner with us. How do you do that? You pray for us. You support us. You pass along our shows to those that don't know about us yet, but also you help us financially. Thank you. Mm, amen. I, I think a lot of people get a incorrect perception about how ministry works and functions. Everyone is called according to the Great Commission. We are all a part of the ministry and Josh and I in front of the camera are no more important than those who are behind the camera because it's God's ministry. It wasn't even Zola's ministry. It may have been called Zola Levitt Ministries, but he knew it was God's ministry, his words that he was proclaiming forth. You called him Josh, but you're also Joshua. Yes. You were Joshua in our series, Joshua, that was in 2023, right? What an amazing thing to be typecast as. Joshua <laughs> was an incredible man in the Bible, and I, I had a great time being able to try to live up to my namesake, for sure. So we're going to show you some excerpts from that series and also the rebuilding of the Third Temple. Ram's horn, different shapes, different sizes, all reminders of Adonai's sacrificial provision of a ram in place of Isaac. When we hear it sound, we recall the miracle on Mount Moriah. And now, as we face the imposing forces at Jericho, the blast from the priest's horn will summon yet another miracle. But first, the soldiers under my command must be readied. Need sharpening. This one, replace it. This is a poor sampling. You can do better than this. See to it that your men are armed well for tomorrow. They'll precede the priests and the Ark of the Covenant. And see to it that the priests have their shofar as well. Can this be done by day's end? I think so. That's not enough. We circle the city at sunrise. I need to know that this can be done. Yes, sir. Wow. 
I encountered an angel yesterday. Sir? An angel. He had a sword in his hands and said he was the captain of the hosts of the Lord of Adonai. I've used this in many a battle, but I shudder to think how quickly he could have overcome me. What did you do? He told me to loosen my sandals, for I was standing on holy ground, and I made haste to do just that. Sir, I'll gather my men and prepare as you requested. Tomorrow we take Jericho. No. No. It won't be tomorrow. The Lord told me we would march around the walls once a day for six days. And on the seventh day, we will encircle the walls seven times. Then, and only then, will the entire company shout when the shofars are blown. I'll prepare the ropes as well so we can scale the walls. That won't be necessary. Then how do we take the city? The walls will fall on their own. On their own? Yes. One stone upon another until the walls are no more. And then our armed men will enter and utterly destroy this city. If every man does as the Lord has commanded, Jericho will soon be ours. Go. And the walls came a-tumbling down. Joshua called it some 3,400 years ago, and it happened just as he foretold, right here in Jericho. God could have chosen anywhere on earth, but he chose Israel. He could have revealed his redemption anywhere. He chose Jerusalem. The house of the Lord might have been any place on earth, he chose Mount Moriah. Past, present, and future, the mountain of the Lord has been a beacon of hope and remains a strategic site for the next temple of God. Dateline Jerusalem, the coming temple. This is the place of my throne. And so he envisions a rebuilt temple complex in Jerusalem behind me is going to be that place somewhere sometime soon coming and he says I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel Eshken Shom Betoch Bnei Yisrael Leolam forever again he sees a kind of permanence here which is why when you read Ezekiel yet you have to look over the horizon into the future not gonna lie, prophecy is my thing. I love that series. And if you wanna see the place where prophecy is going to unfold, Israel is that place. And you can go with us on tour, guys. You can go with us on tour, and here's the deal. Yeah. Reading is cool, but I'm a visual guy, <laughs> yes, all right? I don't wanna read Star Wars. I wanna go see the movie in the theater <laughs> because it's so much more impactful. The first time I went to Israel, mm. every story I had ever read in the Bible just jumped out in front of my face. It was like a topographical map of yeah. like everything I had ever learned. This spring, there are still a few seats left. You need to be on this tour with us together We're as going. we see all these experiences, as we get to talk about the stories, we get to teach. Caleb's got prophecies. He's going to say, look, this is right where Josh is going to put the, the mark on the red heifer so that we're safe. <laughs> yeah. These are the kind of things you want to experience. You need to get on this tour. Mm. And we're, go we're going to. Yeah. Hey, the whole <laughs> four of us. But it's going to be so full mm -hmm. of God's words, so full of God's sights, so full of God's food. Come with us. Yes, can't wait. The International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem has been a part of our ministry for a very long time. David Parsons is the vice president and we spoke with him. Let's go there now. Look, Jesus said, blessed are those who have never seen and still believe. And we encourage everyone, come and see 
the land, come and see the place where he was laid, come see his hometown, his birth town, uh, all the land uh, where all the patriarchs, the prophets, the kings, and all the New Testament figures in this land. The Bible comes a pop-up book. And even if you can't make it, bless you for your faith. And from where you are, pray for Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That word peace, uh, shalem in Hebrew, it means complete or, or whole in the New Testament. When, when Paul talks about uh, uh, may you be in perfect peace, it's just shalem, shalem, like a double prayer, a double imperative, meaning complete peace. May you have complete peace and nothing troubling you. And when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you're praying for the wholeness, the unity of this city. And I think that's very important that there are God is raising up Christians around the world to, to really lift this city, this people, this nation up in prayer uh, because they're going to face uh, things ahead. Uh, and they've already faced wars and such, but the things ahead that it's really for the sake of the whole world, that time of peace that, that um, we all long for when they'll beat their swords into plowshare. Well, it's coming, but before we get there, God uses Israel. He draws the nations up to a rebuilt Israel and a rebuilt Zion in order to judge them. And it, it may mean peril for the nation, but I don't think it'll mean another Holocaust, another destruction. But to, you know, they've returned for our sake. We have to realize this that, and what their, their journey is almost over and what they're going to go through here helps usher us into, helps birth us into the messianic age. But as with every birthing, there's, there's birth pangs and suffering and Jesus talks about these. So we need Christians around the world especially at these times of troubles and birth pangs to help help the nation through. And uh, one day we'll all enter together that glorious age of the son of David reigning from Jerusalem. David Parsons is right. It is all about Jerusalem. Man. There's only one city in this world where everything comes, should I say, to a head. It is the prophetic from the end to the future. Thank you, David Parsons. And thank you to all our viewers. You know what you all just did? You all, through your giving and your generous giving, sent Joshua and Caleb to Jerusalem to do two brand new series for our program. In Hebrew, it's called Toda. So Toda, thank you very much. You yes, did it. Yes, we've loved having Dr. Seif around this table, mm -hmm. but we're so excited about 2024 with you guys. Lots coming up. We're very excited because God has given us messages that are time sensitive that we want to give to you that are impending, that are for your lost friends or family members or neighbors. And, and you're going to see an entire new year of 2024 of new messages, boots on the ground in Israel, and it's God's word going forth. These messages and the things that God has for you isn't about learning like you're in school. It's about making you the person that he's called you to be. Yes. This is the equipping that is going to take your life from where you've been in, the cries that you've made to the Father, how you want to be and live in the fulfillment that he has for you. This is how that happens through that education and through learning the things that he has for us. And that's why we're so excited about 2024 and all yes. these things. You're about to be equipped like never before. That's right. Ooh, I'm ready for 2024. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Here are some highlights from these guys who were in Israel. Let's go there now. There's our friend, Jewish Bob, the weed eater. He traveled all the way from DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, to visit us. And he knows right when we say action, to turn on and start weed eating, man. Well, I stayed back to get behind the scenes shots and everybody left me. I got bees right here. I got demon mountains over here. But all my peoples are gone. Got behind me. That looks a little curious. Okay. What's that little cave right there? That's the gates of hell, like right there. Pan's Grotto. Are you kidding me? You don't want to go there. You might end up someplace you don't want to be. Come out, out of everything we could have possibly, we found hell right there? Hell's right there, yeah. Lebanon, Israel.
that little horn represents the beast that comes out of that ten horn kingdom. But he knows God's calendar timing. At the end of the tribulation is day 2520 when Yeshua will come for him and he will take him and throw him into that bottomless pit. Take us to the site of Nazareth. That's where Yeshua began. And what a fitting place to look at his beginning when we consider his end. Whether you practice Hanukkah or Christmas in your home, it is a season of giving. Dave and I are both parents and we're grandparents. We love giving gifts to our kids and to our grandchildren. It brings us much joy. We hope that the gifts that you give us financially to keep our program on the air bring you joy also. I know this is a time that Yeshua really wasn't born. It was probably September, October when he came. But it's a time that the whole world focuses on him. Even the lost recognize that Yeshua was born around this time. We have Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights, is a reminder to us Jewish people that God saved us from annihilation. There was an abomination, there is one to come, but he will always deliver us from the hand of the enemy that seeks to annihilate us. So that's why I always remember this time of year, the ultimate gift, the ultimate sacrifice of love. Remember that the sacrifice and the, de and the deliverance that the Father brings isn't for you to sit in complacency. It isn't for you to just be a baby and drink the milk. It's for you to raise up and be trained and to become the men and women of God that you were designed to be. That's why this show exists. These programs, the commitment of time and finances and everything that goes into this is so that you can fulfill the call on your life to reach out and literally grab people out of the clutches of hell and bring them in with the Father for eternity. I was gonna say, that's the greatest gift of all. Yes. yes. Matt, I, I love a present, <laughs> but that's the greatest gift of all, and that's what we want to give to our viewers and those that support us. Amen. And I just want to say, as I sit here and hear you guys, I think Zola Levitt, our founder, would be so proud to hear and see that you guys are, are you. here. I don't think you ever met him, correct? No, never in person. We came on just like a month before he died. He wasn't well. Uh, but we prayed for him and, and we went through that whole transition and it's really a legacy that we've seen and we're so proud to be a part you of it. You prayed for him. Now will you pray for the peace of Jerusalem mm -hmm. in Hebrew? It would be my honor. Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem.